Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You're watching Linda Lately. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make my mom's top secret color song recipe. It's the best ever. Anyway, if you're Southeast Asian, meaning if you're from Laos, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and so on and so forth, you guys know what this is. It's the best. <laughs> Alright, we're going to be using four different types of flour for this recipe. You will need one bag of bang kachow, also known as regular jasmine rice flour. So yes, this is the same type of flour that you would be using for kapiak sen. One of the top secret ingredients that is used for this kala song is mung bean starch because it's going to give it a really sticky consistency when we are cooking the flour later, you'll see. You're also going to be needing some tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is important because it provides elasticity, did I pronounce that correctly, for the kalasong noodles so it doesn't break as easily. You guys know what I'm talking about if you made kalasong before. And I'm using two different kinds. The one that I showed you earlier is the fine version and this one is more rough, bigger pieces. You're also going to be needing some white limestone paste, also known as bun in Lao. Basically, this holds the shape of your noodles together so it doesn't fall apart. This is imperative. You do need to get this. And it's packaged in here, but it's hard once you open it up, so it's like a brick. Therefore, you do need to dilute it with some water. In one gallon of drinking water, regular drinking water, I'm just going to be using half of the container of the white limestone paste that's crushed up and then I leave it in here. The classic signature flavor of the little noodles that you're making is pandan flavoring. If you've never had this before, basically it's like the vanilla of Asia. It's used in all types of desserts. It tastes a lot like vanilla but a little bit better because it has rosy notes to it also. It's very cool and interesting. Anyway, I'm using both the extract and I'm also going to be using the fresh pandan leaf itself. But you don't put it in like this. You have to blend it up so you can get the pulp and the water separate. That's why with three cups of water and half the pandan leaf package, I'm going to be blending it up. And you gotta let it blend up for a cool little while so it can turn pretty green. Once a couple of minutes has passed, you can finally strain your pandan and you want to press on it with the back of the spoon so you can really get all of that great, beautiful, vibrant juice out of the leaves. You can use just the artificial flavoring for the pandan because a lot of people do it like that. However, I like to use a little bit of both. I mean to each their own. I just think it tastes better when you actually use the fresher stuff. I have a question to anybody who is watching my video. How green do you like to make your little noodles? Do you like to make it really, really, really green? Or do you like make it a medium green or a light green? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. The next step is in a pot that you're going to be using to cook the flour in, you're going to put 11 cups of the limestone paste water. So yes, the water that you diluted the bun or limestone paste with, you're going to put it in the pot and then eventually you're going to mix in all of the flour. So that includes the jasmine rice flour, the tapioca starch flours, remember I use the fine one and then the rough one, and then also the mung bean starch flour. And you're just going to whisk it away for a couple of minutes. It's not going to be thick initially, okay? That doesn't happen until you start cooking it. So it's still going to have a fairly thin and watery consistency before you put it on the stove top. Now that all of the flour is mixed in there, you're just going to also want to mix in your pandan juice that you just made. And <laughs> the rest of it is very easy. You're just flavoring it at this point. Not only are you mixing in the pandan juice, but you're also going to be putting in the pandan extract. 
Like I said, you guys, there's really levels to this. So depending on how green you want to make this, you can put more or less of the artificial pandan that I showed you guys earlier. It's up to you guys. Just know that when you finally end up making the noodles right, when you finally chill it in some ice water, it is going to lose some of the green color. That's why if you want an extra green, like super duper 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 green, then you can use two whole things of the pandan flavoring. If you are like myself, I only use like half or three-fourths of the whole bottle at a time. You want to just make sure you're stirring this around for a good little bit so that all of the green stuff can get in there and make sure that all of your flour is completely diluted in there also. The next step is to bring this on the stovetop and bring it to a boil and this part is a, a little strenuous, a little labor intensive, but I promise you it's going to be well worth it. You know why you guys? Because you're going to have to stir this in the same direction for about 35 to 45 minutes until all the flour is completely cooked. I do not put this on very high heat. I only put it, I bring it to a boil at first, right? Just to get things going and then once it starts to thicken up, that's when I leave it on medium to high heat. Not like super high, but not super low, somewhere in the middle. And I'm just going to be stirring this for, like I said, 35 to 45 minutes. You can either use the whisk or you can use a wooden spool. It really doesn't matter. But just know you got to keep on stirring this because you don't want it to burn on the very bottom. To find out if it's cooked or not, you can use a little bit of the little pandan flour, put it into a cup of cold water, and then you can taste it. That way you know if it's raw or not. It's okay to let your flour cool down for a little minute, a couple of minutes, but eventually you want to start making your noodles, so you're going to have to do that in a bowl of ice water. I'm just using an appropriate amount of water and some ice, enough to make sure that it will chill once I start making this, and eventually you're just going to press your noodles. You're going to drop the flour into the press. You can find these press presses on either Amazon or at your local Asian market. Basically it has holes on the bottom and it has a press that you literally push in right so you can make the noodles. There's different variations of this little machine invention thing that you can find but this is the one that we have and depending on how big or small you want your noodles you can either press it really hard for big noodles or you could just let it do its own thing and barely press on it to make the smaller ones. I hope that makes sense for you guys. But basically, you just want to go ahead and repeatedly do this until all of your noodles are eventually made. At first, initially, it's going to look kind of thin. Don't fret. It's supposed to be like that at first. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes until it really settles and try not to mess with it too much. I know it can be kind of tempting because you want to check on your noodles, but trust me, the more you mess with it, the more it's going to break. And it's inevitable. You are going to have a little bit of breakage here and there, but as long as you don't have a lot of breakage, like you don't want this thing to start looking like no rice porridge now, then you know you're doing it completely wrong, but it should look a little bit or a lot like how it does right here. Yes, it does take quite a bit of work to make this. It takes a little elbow grease, but you know what? It's worth it. It's really good. I don't really eat other types of nam wan. This is my favorite one ever. It should look a lot like this once the process is complete, and I do always keep it in some type of water when I'm serving it. So whether it be with regular water or if you want to go ahead and put the coconut water in there right away go ahead but it always needs to stay moist after the noodles are made you want to make your brown sugar syrup and I keep it pretty simple it's only two ingredients 
I have about four cups of brown sugar here and I'm just going to be boiling it with about I want to say 10 cups of water I boil it for maybe 10 to 15 minutes at most if you don't like the foam then eventually you can scoop that out once it's done however you can make this as thick or sweet as you want but this is the consistency that I'm content with as far as the coconut milk goes, there are so many different options that you can choose from. All of these brands are good. If it's a Thai brand, it's always going to be good. Because I made such a large quantity, I'm probably going to be using about 5 or 6 whole cans of coconut milk. What's your favorite brand? Let me know. To make this real cute, you can put this in a plastic cup or a mason jar, even in a bowl. Put your noodles in there, put some coconut milk in there, and put however much sugar you would like. I'm disgusting. I love sugar, so I put a lot of sugar in there. And that's it for my video, guys. I hope I made this really easy to understand. Please like this video, comment down below, and subscribe. I post every single week. Look forward to it.